Okay, I'll just start. So, hello everybody and welcome to our first session here at the conference about movement strategy. Um, we are talking about the movement, the Wikimedia Movement Strategic Direction and what it means for CE. And it will not be that we tell you what we think it means for CE, but we will ask you questions and we will also later invite people here with us on stage and Catherine will, will talk about the strategic direction that will make a, a quick introduction into the movement strategy process. Um, and I'm Nicole Eber, I work with Wikimedia Deutschland uh, since 2010 and since this year I also work uh, with the Wikimedia Foundation on the movement strategy process. And I'm especially happy to be here this year because my last CE meeting is already quite some time, uh, uh, it's all, already a while ago, it was in 2013 in Belgrade, that was my first and only CE meeting, so I'm, I'm really happy to be, to be back again and to see you all. Um, the Wikimedia movement strategy process, we kicked it off at the beginning of the year and we, what we want to figure out in this process is how can a Wikimedia in the year 2030 look like? So what do we all imagine our movement to look like? What do we want to be known for in the year 2030? And what will the Wikimedia of our dreams also look like in 2030? And as you can now see, we, we love numbers. Um, we divided this, this whole process into different tracks and phases and cycles. Um, so we, we first of all thought, okay, who, who is it who should, who should be involved in this, in this process? Who's, um, in, whose input do we want in, in the process and for our future? And we divided it into four different tracks. The first tracks are the organized groups. These are mainly the affiliates, but also other groups that are somewhat organized. The foundation is also not only somewhat organized, but it's an organization in the movement. It's not an affiliate, but an, an organization, so an organized group. But also, for example, Wikilove's Monuments is an organized group, but they don't have a formal structure. And also CEE. It consists of several affiliates, but is... Um, it can be seen as an organized group, uh, group as well. So that's the first track. The second track are the individual contributors. So everyone who individually contributes to the Wikimedia project in terms of editing or taking photos or developing software and whatever you can think of what, what people do in, in our projects. Um, and then we have the new voices, the new voices tracks, and we divided them as new voices means so everyone who is not yet in our movement. And these are partners and donors and individuals and, and organizations. Um, first of all, in regions that, where we already have a, a high awareness for Wikimedia, for Wikipedia, where people know us and use our projects, but also in regions where there's not such a high awareness for our projects. So we wanted to make this um, a process where we hear as many voices as possible. And then we divided this into two phases. We are at the moment at the end of phase one, and phase one is the what I just said, the phase where we dream about our future. How would Wikimedia look like, or what, what would the Wikimedia of your, our dreams look like in 2030? And in the next phase, we will then discuss how do, can we fill this with life? What does it actually mean? And the first phase, again, was divided into three different cycles. I'm going a little bit more into detail um, in the next couple of minutes. And we came up with five different themes in these cycles. So five themes, five topics that we found um, or that um, we heard from all the consultation and the conversations that we had that people found very important and essential for the Wikimedia movement. And now we, have, um, we are uh, close to concluding phase one with our one direction, the direction into which Wikimedia as a movement is planning to go until... 2013, thir I always say 13, but that's not correct, it's 13. <laughs> 13 was the, was the meeting. That yes, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and Catherine will talk about this in a couple of minutes um, and present the direction to you. Um, we kind of started at the Wikimedia conference this year, that was in April. I think many of you have been there. Can I probably have a show of hands? Two of you have been at the Wikimedia conference. Okay, yeah. So a lot of you uh, have already been involved and have been following this, I guess. But still, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we, what we had 
uh, what came out of it. So the in the first cycle, we asked like a very open and broad question. What is it that we want to build and achieve in the next 15 years? And as I've said, we like numbers. And if you could um, calculate 2017 plus 15, it's not 2030, but 2032. But we thought <laughs> 2030 just sounds much better. So, <laughs> so I'm just trying to... Uh, uh, make this not the first question in the later Q&A. <laughs> um, and um, I'm not going too much into detail here, but this is all on Meta, and we will share more reports and so on uh, with you later on, but just to show that we had a, lot, a very broad and variety of input that we collected um, about content, about community, um, about our values, about education and knowledge and so on, and we, clustered, we distilled all the input that we gathered in the first cycle from communities and from organized groups to five top themes. The themes that we felt or that that uh, we heard from from all of you were the main, yeah, main topics of interest. That uh, healthy and inclusive communities, the augmented age, which stands stands for technology, truly global movement that we reach uh, every part of the world, and that we that we are or even yeah that we are the most respected source of knowledge. And how can we Uh, even improve this this view, and how can we engage with the knowledge ecosystem? So everyone around us that's outside of our movement, but 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 which uh, who are um, like organizations that are still working towards the same mission that we are, or a comparable mission. And um, there are some some little stars here in the on the left side, um, and I wanted to point this out a little bit more because we've heard in the first cycle a lot of kind of feature requests in the, um, in the um, comments and conversations we had. So people were saying, I don't want to talk about 2030, please fix my UX, or please fix the visual editor, or please fix photo uploads, and so on. <laughs> and I just want to say that the, these, all these feature requests or ideas about technology are not lost, um, even if you don't see them showing up at the moment in the direction or in the themes. But we are creating a report um, about all these feature requests and forwarding them also to the product uh, department in the WMF and to see what what we and they can, can make of it in the coming years. Um, in cycle two, we discussed these five themes. We wanted to have more details and more um, like opinions and ideas about what these five themes actually mean To, um, to people, to, the, to track A and B, the affiliates or the organized groups and the, the individual contributors. And um, what we found out is that um, healthy communities were seen by everyone, by, by the communities and also by the organized groups as like the most critical precondition for our movement and most important of the five themes. And then we had um, the other four were seen... In, in many different ways. Um, I'm also not going too much into detail here, but it was um, because I think many of you have probably already read it, and you can read the re all the reports later on, and on the other hand, we only have half an hour left, so I don't want to go too much into the, the history of this here, but it's m mainly all on meta, and you can, <laughs> can all read read about it. Um, besides the, the conversations within the communities and in the affiliates, we also encouraged affiliates to host salons with their partners or with their communities. Here, for example, also photos from the, I think, from the Polish uh, uh, um, strategy salon and, and other different, different meetings where affiliates hosted events and conversations with, for example, their partners. And this is something where we heard from, from a lot of people that it was the first time or the, a very good um, opportunity for them to engage with their partners and communities because they had a concrete ask and concrete questions and they invited them to come and discuss the future of the Wikimedia movement. And for some, it was really the first opportunity to be in touch more closely with their partners and create more momentum for collaboration with external people and organizations. And um, in the course of this whole uh, first phase, we also created a map of the movement. We tried to create a map. And I, I can imagine that all of you have different views on how this movement uh, is actually 
built and made up and so on, but and several people have tried to draw the movement, and this is a, like another try where we wanted to, um, yeah, where we wanted to draw how huge this movement actually is. That we are not alone with Wikimedia, but there are several other organizations and people um, in the world who also work towards knowledge and free knowledge. Um, and I just wanted to show this to you because I like it so much. <laughs> um, and then in the, uh, we didn't only talk to um, people who are already in the movement, but also to experts and to new voices who are not yet represented in the movement, and did a lot of one-on-one -on -one interviews, desk research, and these salons um, count towards this as well. And um, all these insights from, from the research um, and the conversations with external experts led us to cycle three, where we... Um, where we put up these insights in front of the, the communities and, and organized groups <coughs> and asked them what do they actually, how do they think these insights relate to what they are working on in Wikimedia or what, how they envision the future of Wikimedia. And we asked uh, different questions, we, we called them challenges and we posted um, some of the research results every week and asked people how they relate to it, and it was, for example, um, what are new ways of sharing knowledge beyond the encyclopedia? So, what about, for example, um, social media t uh, functionality, functionality, and and what is also beyond the wiki, uh, beyond the en encyclopedia um, in terms of um, the opportunity of creating new sister projects, for example, with content that we have uh, until now not really dealt with. And then also the, the challenge of how do we actually verify new forms of knowledge um, that are beyond the, the standards, how we verify knowledge at the moment in the Wikimedia movement. How do we as a movement actually deal with the increasing misinformation that we, that we see has, has been rising around us? And, and how do we actually deal with new technology trends? How can we keep up with these trends um, as an organization or a movement that also uses technology for their projects. And then, of course, the population shifts, um, uh, especially in regions that where we have not been so active in the past. What does this actually mean for us, and how can we, um, yeah, how can we like, kind of react to this and, and become more active? And from all these, so we took all the responses, a lot of text and a lot of data and a lot of research results, and uh, synthesized them and iterated them and so on and so on and, and worked with them to, fi to, fi to figure out, to try to understand what is it that the movement, that the people in the movement think, the organizations in the movement think and stand for and how does it also match and fit with the current state of, of research and so on. And um, yeah, we iterated and synthesized this into a direction for our, jo our joint future and this is what we are uh, presenting uh, right now, um, yeah, a, a direction to move forward together. And I would now like to ask Catherine to <coughs> talk about this and present it to to all of you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. And thank you, everyone here who participated in this. Um, so I am excited to present this to you today because this is actually the first time that we are presenting this direction. As Nicole said, we did work on it at Wikimania and we presented it at Wikimania, but we got lots of feedback in the time since, and this is the latest version uh, that we believe represents that feedback. So, thank you, as we've just said. And so the question is, now what? Um, the strategic direction, I, I'm going to go back a slide, the strategic direction that has emerged has really focused on two themes. As you heard from Nicole, there were conversations around the importance of high quality knowledge, there were conversations around the importance of a healthy community as a fundamental baseline for everything that we do, there were conversations around the importance of partnerships, there were conversations around the importance of global reach and really serving all people as is part of our mission. And the way that we have begun to pull those two things together, I think, addresses two very critical components of who we are as a global community and what we do in terms of what we create and how it is used in the world. Uh, and so the first of those is this idea of knowledge 
as being a service to people. And the concept of this, I have to apologize because I think it's a little abstract, and so hopefully by <coughs> describing it, it will become more real. But the idea is thinking of knowledge as something that serves the needs of people wherever they are. Knowledge is something that is useful and practical. Knowledge is something that is a dialogue back and forth as opposed to a static thing or a fixed thing that is presented. And I think that's really consistent with what we know about our mission statement around knowledge being something that is participatory and knowledge being something that is global. So how are we talking about this in a really specific way? Well, the first thing you'll notice is that it doesn't say here anywhere about knowledge as an encyclopedia. It's talking about knowledge very broadly speaking, which I think is actually, we talk a lot about Wikipedia as the encyclopedia, but if we start to really look around where the movement is today, we know that there are many other projects, you can see some of them on the wall behind me, at least in the Polish context, uh, that are very much embedded in the free knowledge ecosystem. We also know that we work with many different partners, and when we do things like work with GLAM institutions, and when we bring them into the world of Wikimedia Commons or Wikidata, certainly those projects have an impact on Wikipedia, but Wikipedia isn't the only part of the way that we as a movement are already thinking about knowledge. While we still talk about Wikipedia because it's what most people know, the reality is, is that we're working in a much broader knowledge ecosystem in most of our day-to-day -day work, um, at least at the higher level looking around the movement as a whole. Even while many of us may edit Wikipedia as our primary way of contributing, we already are seeing the projects be something that is much, much broader. And so how do we embrace this and recognize that an encyclopedia is the way that many of us will continue to access and contribute to knowledge, but there are other ways of thinking about knowledge that are allow us to think through um, capturing it with more diversity in ways that allow us to think about understanding um, the way that computers and um, machines interpret knowledge, which is a large part of the way the internet works today. And so let's think about Wikimedia, the whole of Wikimedia, in a really holistic way and think about how we think about our resources and our distribution and our software development across that whole ecosystem. So what do we need to, what does knowledge as a service mean? Um, I really think about this as how do we make Wikipedia Instead, or sorry, Wikimedia, instead of just building on the past, which is very often what we're doing, how do we really think about anticipating and building for the future? And what do I mean by this? Um, right now, most people visit us and know us through, they'll enter in like www.wikipedia.org, or more realistically, they'll go to a search engine and they'll search for something and then they'll find their way to Wikipedia. Yes, I see lots of nods in the room. Um, but the reality is, is that people around the world are beginning to access information in different ways that isn't just about entering in a URL into a browser. They're accessing information through making, asking their phones questions. They're accessing information through going on chat networks and going and asking sort of queries and services. And when they do things like this, Wikipedia is not always part of that conversation. Even if the knowledge exists within the Wikimedia ecosystem to serve the questions people have, they don't necessarily have a point of contact with us. This is something that we learned when we started doing research into users around the globe. We found that a lot of people, not just here in, in Europe or in uh, North America, um, among younger people, are changing their behaviors. They experience and seek information in different ways than somebody like me who grew up with a browser and a dial-up internet connection on my phone, like on my landline. My behaviors are very different than people who have had phones for a very long time. And that doesn't just mean smartphones, but also phones that have fewer features. They seek information in different ways. They use social networks, and I don't mean Facebook, but literally the networks within their social community to find information. And we're not really a part of that conversation. We're not a part of that conversation in serving knowledge, and we're also not a part of that conversation in the way that knowledge is being created and shared back. So that participation part of it is missing somewhat. So how do we think about evolving MediaWiki and our other underlying architecture to do, and I'm, I'm being technical here, but I'm being technical in a deliberate way, 
Right now, we don't allow, we don't have really easy points of entry such as APIs and services that allow for other tools to be built on top of the information that exists within the Wikimedia ecosystem. So this is actually thinking about from a technical standpoint, how would we need to evolve in order to make sure that when whatever our future looks like, whether it is the desk, the, this isn't even called the desktop anymore, the laptop or the phone, or whether it's thinking about um, voice queries, which is increasingly a very major part of the way people consume information in some places in the world, um, and not just rich Western countries, but uh, there's been lots of research around how voice is increasingly part of the way people seek information in low literacy countries. How do we be prepared to be able to offer interfaces and experiences that work across all of these different types of ways of seeking knowledge? <coughs> so that's the sort of technical component about knowledge as a service, is how do we serve knowledge in different ways, but then also one other way of thinking about this is currently, if you want to contribute to Wikipedia, or Wikimedia, the only way to do so is you have to go to a browser and hit the edit button. If we are talking about people who are talking to their devices in the future, and I know it sounds like, wow, that's really futuristic, but 15 years, I think it's actually quite reasonable. How do we allow or think about the ways that people might be able to contribute, not just by entering into a keyboard onto a browser, but through other formats and other mediums? We were talking last night, just giving examples. Um, I know I'm, I'm not really a futurist in any way, and I am like very slow to adopt technology, but people who are younger than me are not. Um, like thinking about the way that we're talking about now augmented reality and other forms of interactions that are going to be much more organic and um, normal seeming to people who, for whom that is the first technology they've ever used as opposed to something that seems like something they've read in a science fiction book. So how do we think about not just allowing ourselves to be ready for these different forms of interaction, but also the really critical part for us is participation and contribution back because that's something that we can't do right now. Uh, I would say that we are read-write in exactly one interface, which is the web browser, but we need to be read-write across all of the different experiences that people have with the knowledge in Wikipedia. So then, being a platform to serve open knowledge, what does this mean? In some ways, we're already this. Uh, we already maintain MediaWiki, which other organizations use, and if you're familiar with Wikidata, and I know Asaf is doing a training on it later, that runs off a software called Wikibase. Wikibase is not the same thing as Wikidata. Wikidata is not the same thing as Wikibase. Wikidata is a project the way that Wikipedia is a project. Wikibase is a software the way that MediaWiki is a software. What if we were able to provide Wikibase and MediaWiki to more organizations that are invested in free knowledge? And why does that matter? Well, we've done a tremendous amount of work thinking as a community about the ways that people are able to interact with knowledge, the way that a knowledge is structured and stored, the way that linked and structured data works, and a lot of the standards that we've developed over time, whether it's for commons that we're working on right now, the Structured Data on Commons project, whether it's for Wikibase and thinking through Wikidata, whether it's for the Wikimedia, for Wikipedia as a whole, these are projects and resources that are very helpful to those outside of the Wikimedia movement who are in our broader community, looking at that ecosystem map that Nicole presented earlier. We talked to GLAM institutions who are interested in using Wikibase as a way of storing information about the collections in their catalogs. That's great. That's an open standard that is useful to them that this community has worked to develop. So if we're able to offer them tools that they can use, that means that more information can be available in open standards and formats, that our partners have easier ways to open up their collections and informations and archives, and that ultimately, if we're working across various different institutions in similar open ways, it means there's more open knowledge for all of us to be able to seek and pull from and use as we're curating the information that's in the Wikimedia projects. So by being a resource that is an open platform that our partner institutions and other free knowledge organizations want to use, we are actually, hopefully, what we can do is expand the free knowledge ecosystem, which is actually good for everyone and is actually very much what our vision calls for, is not, is not Wikipedia to be the biggest thing, but that everybody can share in free knowledge. But ultimately, that also has benefit to the Wikimedia projects by making more knowledge available for us to use as we go about building, whether it's the encyclopedia or other projects. 
And that, I think, is a little bit about the building tools for ourselves, our allies and partners. I think the first thing is building tools for ourselves. As Nicole mentioned, there were lots of feature requests that came in in the first part of the consultation. We've been taking those and saying, how do we prioritize those and think about what we need to be developing in order to serve the needs of communities? But then also knowing when we talk about partnerships with GLAM institutions, they have these incredible collections that they might want to share, and yet they'll say things like, I don't know how to upload it all into Wikimedia Commons. Or I have this information, this metadata about my collection, which is how I do my curation, and I don't have any way to embed that in the current structures. So we need to build tools not just for ourselves, but also for the partners who really want to work with us as a way of expanding free knowledge, uh, but currently don't have easy pathways to do so. And then I think the last thing is really thinking about enabling new forms of knowledge. I mentioned some of the sort of futuristic things like augmented reality and the like, but it's also about thinking about what, what our research has really showed us is that young people who are using or coming online are as much interested, and again, it doesn't matter if they're in Poland or if they are in Ghana, they're interested in rich experiences, so new forms of knowledge, both being media experiences, whether that's video or images, and having that integrated in a meaningful way with also text, which is what we've always historically been good at, but then also new forms of knowledge as ways of thinking about what we were talking about yesterday at the 16th birthday for Polish Wikipedia, new forms of knowledge that reflect things like traditional learning or oral history, how do we create space in the projects for these sorts of knowledge and think about ways of integrating them or connecting them together. So maybe it's a new project that focuses on traditional ways of uh, traditional learning or oral histories. It may be slightly different than what Wikipedia traditionally is, but if we have a common underlying structure across the Wikimedia ecosystem, we can imagine a world in which somebody might start at Wikipedia and then find themselves learning about other forms of information and other forms of knowledge as they go about that learning journey. So knowledge as a service is really focused on how do we make knowledge available through the architecture of the projects today? How do we think about different user experiences, both for cons consumption but also contribution back? And really thinking about preparing for the future. Because right now a lot of what we do is continue to work on the structures that we've developed historically, but we'd like to sort of shift our focus to thinking about how do we serve the world to come. The other really important concept was this idea of equity. So I shared this with somebody the other day and they said, equity, isn't that like a financial term around corporations? Oops, what did I just do? Well, where'd it go? All right. Um, yes, it is. But what it is meant to you, what it is meant to mean in this, in this usage is more like equality. Um, the difference is, is that equality and equity if I give everybody in this room $1, um, that would be something akin to equality. But that doesn't account for the different ways that you're, you might uh, be able to exchange that dollar. For somebody, that might be a lot more value than it would be for somebody else. So what we're thinking about when we think about equity is how do we give people access to the things that they need that raise us all to a similar level of resources and services for the work that we do. What does that mean in terms of knowledge equity? Well, it means that what we want to do is focus on how do we balance the way that we think about resources and services so that we're not just focusing on the largest communities or the most vocal communities or the oldest communities or the most mature communities, but also thinking about how do we resource communities that maybe are growing, maybe have different needs, maybe have different challenges, maybe are going through a transitional period, um, different projects. Knowledge equity for, in the terms of resources for communities should really be thought of as how do we work to ensure that resources are available to communities that need them in ways that serve the needs of those communities and that people are not excluded intentionally or otherwise from being able to access resources and services. And not just access resources and services, but participate meaningfully in the way that we think about the future of our movement. This is something that was really important in thinking about movement strategy, was not just who do we hear from the loudest voices or the most um, numerous voices, but how do we make sure we're hearing from all voices and that we're giving weight that is equitable to our colleagues from Cote d'Ivoire, 
as well as our colleagues from the United States. And so that, I think, is a really important part of the concept of equity. Uh, it also allows us to think about how do we serve communities that have historically been underserved. So we're talking about, for example, there are a number of projects right now around supporting indigenous communities, um, about supporting communities in the global south. Uh, so thinking about how do we think about communities that have historically been overlooked, smaller language communities, these are all very important. Uh, the other one is welcoming people from every background. I know that in this room today, I don't think anybody would disagree with this. This is a room full of people who are committed to diversity in what we do in terms of our projects. People, we heard about that during the Q&A this morning, not just diversity of gender or ethnicity or geography or language, but also diversity of uh, the way that we interact, introverts versus extroverts. How do we make space for the full diversity of who we are? The reason being that we can't really expect to have all the world's knowledge unless we really think about including all the world's different perspectives and experiences. So that's something that I think is really important. Welcoming people from every background, those who come in good faith to participate and grow and share knowledge. And then breaking down the barriers to accessing and sharing knowledge. Uh, this, I think, connects back nicely to the first theme around service and knowledge as a service, is that there are many barriers that exist in the world today to accessing and sharing knowledge. Some of them are technical, like the ones that I mentioned. They might be that people are using different devices or have different experiences, different access to bandwidth, um, different access to the cost of service to be able to connect to the internet. How do we serve those people? But there are other barriers as well. Those barriers might be political barriers, those barriers might be linguistic barriers, those barriers might be barriers of ability, uh, in which you may have people who uh, have visual impairments or auditory impairments. How do we think about serving them as well? So I think the concept of knowledge equity is really very much tied to the part of our vision statement in which we say, in which every single human can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. And really making sure that that every single human part is something that we prioritize. So how do these two themes tie back into those five themes that we heard in the community discussion? Well, we know that for us to have an equitable community and to truly have all the world's knowledge, we must be a healthy community. That's really important. Uh, we know that if we're going to be working with partners and we know that if we're going to be serving partners, that ties directly to the concept of collaboration and partnership. Uh, we know that for us to have high quality knowledge, that's sort of intrinsic to everything that we do. We should always be seeking to be able to provide the highest quality of information. When we say that we want a globally distributed community and global reach, I think that's very much connected to this idea of knowledge equity, but also knowledge as a service that allows us to reach all people. So hopefully those connections are, it's not that by going from five themes to two that we've lost any of those. It's about how do we think about strengthening, strengthening them in ways that bring them together and allow us to really focus. So what does this hopefully allow us to accomplish? Um, the next couple slides are really about the language of the text itself. So the essential infrastructure of the ecosystem of free knowledge. I think arguably this is something that we already are for many people. We are arguably already an essential e infrastructure for the ecosystem of free knowledge. The, I was talking to the people at Creative Commons recently, and part of the reason that Creative Commons works as well as it does and has licenses that are as effective as they are is because we are the single largest reuser of those licenses. Part of Creative Commons' ability to be powerful in the world is to be able to point to where Creative Commons is powerful in the world. They are able to go out to other partners and say, open licensing is important because look at where it can be successful. And they point to the Wikimedia projects and say, the Wikimedia projects are successful, therefore open licensing can really work in the world. We're already a part, we're already an essential part of this ecosystem of free knowledge. But what if we were, as we think about this, to expand it out, not to make us bigger, but to make the whole ecosystem of free knowledge much larger, with more people who can participate, more institutions that have easy ways to open their collections and their information, more data sets that are available in the world. That rises increases the amount of information that's available for everyone, and in doing so, it makes the Wikimedia project stronger as well. As I said, anyone who shares our vision will be able to join us. 
I think the, we talked a little bit about anyone being able to join us, but I think, of course, the important thing is we want people who are contributing in good faith who people who are committed to the idea that free knowledge is important, that healthy communities are important, that this is something in which everyone can participate. Um, I think that that, you know, the critical thing people said to me, well, I just don't want trolls on my project. It's like, okay, well, we want everyone who shares our vision to be able to join us. Uh, we will advance the world. So this one is a little, for me, was really interesting. When we first put the strategic direction forward, a lot of the questions that we got were, but Why? Why do we do this? Why is this important? And when we sat down and talked to people from across the communities and from the movement, what people really came back to is, well, when I share free knowledge or when I contribute to Wikipedia or when I edit, what I'm really trying to do is actually I want to make the world a better place. I want to make it a place where people have more access to knowledge, where they feel more empowered, where they can do more things, where they know more about the world, where they feel more informed, where they understand other people better, where they understand our common heritage and culture, where it actually creates a world in which we're able to talk to each other, understand our differences, and build better solutions for our future. And so while we don't say this anywhere in the vision statement, it's really a very strong undercurrent and theme when you talk to Wikimedians. Why do I do this? Because I really believe that the world can be a better place when people have access to free knowledge. And so this is how we've decided to phrase it, is we will advance the world. We will make it a better place by making knowledge more accessible. By collecting knowledge that fully represents human diversity. I think, again, that is just another way of saying that it is important that everyone participate. <laughs> a diversity of voices are represented. And not just a diversity in gender, but a diversity in geography, in language, in culture, in religion. A diversity of different experiences and perspectives. And then by building these other structures that allow and enable others to do the same. Because nobody, I think, in this movement says, gosh, this is all about Wikimedia. Um, I know that there are many people here who are not just Wikimedians. There are also free software activists. There are also creative commonsers. There are also uh, artists. There are writers. There are academics. There are librarians. It's not just about Wikimedia. It's about, the know about making knowledge available as a whole. So how do we take this tremendous resource that we have built over time as the Wikimedia movement and not just make knowledge freely available to the world, but provide the tools for other people to be able to do the same? What does the strategic direction give us? Hopefully a path forward. One of the things that I felt very urgently when I joined the Wikimedia Foundation was that we have been building Wikimedia for a very long time, but it's often hard for us to make decisions about where we want to focus or our major priorities or what are the next steps to take, whether that's thinking about the allocation of resources through uh, the Funds Dissemination Committee, or whether that's thinking about what's the next, do we want to, how much should we be investing in Wikidata? Should we be investing in Wikisource? These are questions that people sort of had questions about, but really didn't have a framework to answer those questions. Uh, I think that what we want to be able to do is have a path forward, and how does this translate to your own work in your communities? Uh, one very simple answer for me is that there's long been a question about how many affiliates should we have? Do we want affiliates? I know that sounds crazy, but that was a question a few years back. Like, are affiliates even a good thing? I want to answer, to my mind, affiliates are an unmitigated good thing. Affiliates are great. They're one of the core strengths that we have. Community is one of the core strengths that we have. It's what makes us different from everything else out there. Uh, but now we're actually explicitly saying that. We're saying community is really important. It's one of the core strengths that we have. And we want to grow and be in different places. And this is something that isn't a happy accident, but something that's really intentional and that we want to commit to. So hopefully it gives us a way, a path forward to consider these different things. A way to invite others to join. So now you can actually go out and say when you want to work on partnerships or when you want to recruit new editors, you can... this hopefully will allow you to say, look, this isn't just something that I believe, this is actually core to our strategic direction. We're making a commitment that we want other people to join our movement and that we are going to invest in the resources to make that easier, more friendly, a more accessible thing. A shared future. When we first started this project, one of the things that was so interesting to me was that we talk about the Wikimedia movement, 
But very often when you talk to individuals, they say, well, I work on my project or I work in my community. And not all of us really know each other. And somebody sitting in Russia may have very little that they realize that is in common with someone from Nigeria. What we really wanted to do was to also think about how we collectively, as a movement together, what are our shared values? What are the things that we can agree on? And how do we view ourselves as something that is truly... <laughs> <laughs> that is truly global with commonalities across us even while we have our differences. And ideally, hopefully, it will move us closer to our vision. Our vision never said we should stop at an encyclopedia. It never said we should stop at the borders of the European Union or the United States. Our, board, our vision never said that we should stop anywhere. It says that all knowledge and it says that all people that these are, the, these are the two goals, and that, sorry, it should, says that we should invite all people to participate in all knowledge. And for me, this is something that allows us to get hopefully closer to our vision by setting our sights on something that is somewhere that recognizes what we've done, celebrates where, where, what we've accomplished, continues to invest in the thing that has made us so powerful as a movement and changed the world in such a meaningful way, and also say, challenge us to say, what is the next thing that we want to take on as a group? Because as impossible as it sounded to build, to build a free encyclopedia, and as impossible as it sounds to bring free knowledge to the world, I think this is a room full of people, and this is a movement full of people who continue to prove that impossible is just a direction that we set out to achieve some really incredible possible things. So hopefully this is what the strategic direction gets us to. Um, but I want to, us to now to be able to talk and do something that's quite similar to what we did at Wikimania in Montreal, where we invited people from across the movement to provide their perspective on what the strategic direction might mean to their work and to their communities. Uh, so we'd like to invite a panel up to talk a little bit about this. Um, and provide, provide some feedback on what they think the strengths of the process have been, what the weaknesses of the process have been, and what does this mean for our next steps. Yes, and we would like to invite... Uh, so probably, first of all, thank, thank you very much. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you. And we would now like to invite uh, Puli Merek, Tama, Samad, Sorry, right. Thomas, and, uh, and also Asaf on stage. And can someone go to the other room and quickly grab Asaf? He already is prepared that we grab him, but... Uh... Oops. Uh, easy way. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> so please, uh, do you want to come up on stage? Yeah. And we've uh, also brought printed strategic directions so that you can, uh, you can read and comment on them uh, without being on Meta. Thank you, Asaf. Hello. Hello. <laughs> See you again. Do you also want to put them on? Yeah, it's up to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, and I would just like to start with, um, first of all, a question to Thomas. How much time do we have? Like 15 minutes or? 20 minutes, okay, perfect. I would like to uh, hear from the three of you uh, a few words on your, your, uh, your perspective on the direction. I mean, we've discussed this yesterday, we also talked yesterday, and um, I would like to he hear or to, um, yeah, to hear from you what you think about the strategic direction, what it means to you and probably also to your community or to your organization. Do you want to start? I can, yeah. Okay, thank you. So, and thank you, you for your invitation. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, I would like to say that I can agree with everything that Katrin mentioned in his her presentation uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, but I have some uh, feelings which that the direction text, which is which is uh, prepared on Meta right now, uh, doesn't reflect enough on some points which I feel important. Um, one of these is the is that the, hi, the highest value for the movement is the is the motivated volunteering community, uh, a healthy and sustainable community, which is uh, welcoming, friendly, fun, and uh, and motivating for everybody. Um, and uh, and I would like to see a clear statement in the direction that 
that the community is the is the most important basic for our movement. We are a volunteer movement, and uh, and the community is is uh, really important for us because this is right now. For me, it's not in the in the direction. The other is that um, it says that anyone will be able to join. We have to be <coughs> have to make it possible that anybody who would like to join uh, can join. And I would like to mention that we would like to be visible for people, and we would like to reach that people would like to join us. Uh, not only they they able to join, but they want to join because we. Be because they want to be part of this this movement, and uh, and we are in the CE uh, meeting. So I would like to mention that there is a phrase in the in the direction which says that we should the focus should should be on the on the uh, communities which are which we left out um, with other words which which are underrepresented and uh, and. and for me, this means that if we don't focus for something that that what, what is doesn't include in this, that that indire indirectly we shouldn't focus on that. And we are in the CE uh, meeting. We are a very diverse communities are here represented, and uh, and I'm sure that we, this in this region we have we have <coughs> troubles, or some communities has troubles. Uh, have troubles, and uh, and some communities have transition periods where they really need some help time to time, and uh, and we, if the direction says that we don't focus on this group, then that that this for me it means that we cannot accept help in the in the future on on this. And uh, very very quickly, I would like to mention one more thing, but. Um, it was long time. Long. It was mentioned quite a long time that Wikipedia is not the only project for us, and uh, and we right now we <coughs> cannot say that what will be the. It's a very important brand for us, but cannot say that this will be in 2030 the most important pro pro project for us. So we sh we have to be uh, sh should be able to change. Have to be. Uh, e open for new ideas, new initiatives, and uh, uh, help new ideas. Because, because if we, it's very comfortable to say that we don't want to change because it's, 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 it's not nice how we look like now, but uh, probably we will lose the, the way of with other competitors. How, maybe not the best word for this. <laughs> okay, uh, that was my... Summary. Okay, thanks a lot. I think we we will just move forward um, and have. Actually, we were, we had planned to have a Q and A here, but we don't. We are just running out of time. We will have another session tomorrow, two hours from nine till eleven, where we will have a lot of time for questions and answers. And we also have a backup plan for tomorrow. I think <coughs> afternoon at five or so. What was it? Yeah. So if we don't finish all the conversations tomorrow morning, we also can have a backup. Uh, Tomorrow afternoon. I think we can uh, accommodate the uh, the missing sections uh, in, yes, the, in yes, the in so the schedule where Tim plan. was yeah, supposed to be. Yeah. So if if you if you are interested in that, just like talk to some of the coordinators out there, and we will move that. Okay. Thank you. So then I will give the mic to Asaf. Do you want to share your perspective on? Um, sure. Um, after discussing this a little with Shahab, I have a few thoughts to share. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that this is, has been a very big effort. Um, many of you have felt it, for example, in how often you were asked to translate things, um, how often you had long emails coming from WMF where you had to figure out, wait, what do they want this time? Like, is this, you know, do we need to say something, translate something, show up somewhere? <laughs> So it, it was an effort, and I can assure you it was also an effort from every other side as well. So it was, it was a huge effort, and why do we do it? it? That's the inspiring bit. We did it because we wanted to have a truly uh, uh, comprehensively participatory process. 
as many people as possible to participate from as many communities and cultures and languages, and some will still, of course, uh, have been left out. But still, that's a very impressive thing that we do uh, according to our values. That said, um, I think uh, the document as it stands has very little to disagree with. If you read it, it these are all great things that we would like to see happen. Uh, so there's not so much there that you would read and go, what? No, that should not be the case. We should not go there. Um, but if you reflect on its title as a strategic direction, I think uh, you might be confused. Uh, I certainly found myself confused because it doesn't feel like it's a strategic direction. A strategic direction, to me, uh, should be narrower should be more selective, more focused. It should say, that is where we're going. We're pursuing this goal, or these three goals, but not these 20 goals. Uh, it should implicitly say, and we are putting less effort into all the other things, because this is our direction. And this document isn't really that. Um, it, it, its, uh, its aspirations are so vast uh, there's at least three or four of them that could alone uh, employ us easily until 2030. So, <clears throat> as a whole, the document to me feels more like a shared vision, more like a set of goals that we propose to agree that we all share than a strategic direction. It's kind of a stepping stone on the way to a strategic direction. Uh, so I wanted to call out that confusion in case someone else was also feeling it, that this isn't quite as directive as we might have expected from a direction. But it is still useful because if we can agree that all these things are desirable, that all these things are things we want as a movement to invest in, then that could be some kind of menu from which uh, WMF, on the one hand, all other organizations, all other communities, even individuals like tool builders can look at and go, you know what, this item from this menu, this challenge is what I want to work on. I'm going to build a tool to help with community health, or I'm going to build a tool to help with um, uh, encouraging participation, diversity, uh, or we as, a, as the uh, you know, um, uh, CE network are going to pursue this aspect and less this other aspect. We'll leave that to other players in the movement. So in that sense, <clears throat> this um, shared set of goals can still be useful for us to understand and derive individual strategies, group strategies, organizational strategies, and annual plans uh, from. Um, the other comment I have to, to make is that I think it's a very bold document in how far it goes. When we talk about, uh, for example, breaking down the barriers, that's, that's language in the direction, breaking down the barriers to participation, technological, social, and otherwise. Uh, depending on how seriously you take that phrase, the more seriously you take it, the more political it becomes, the more bold it becomes. Are we really taking on something like the caste system in India? Because we would need to, to break down a very meaningful social barrier to participation in India. Are we taking on the huge infrastructure problems in much of the so-called developing world to make sure people have access, have the, the physical means of contributing? Uh, we're probably not well positioned to do that, but again, depending on how seriously we take this commitment to break down barriers, the more seriously we take it, the more radical this plan or this vision uh, becomes. Uh, so I wanted to call out that, that these aspirations include in them coming up against formidable challenges and also making us as a movement more political in a way that not everybody in the movement would be comfortable with. Uh, knowledge is always, access to knowledge is a political thing. We've, we've mentioned it, I'm sure it's been mentioned already uh, uh, before. Um, but again, the more seriously we take providing access to knowledge, the more seriously we take participation and diversity, the more we will come up against, as we have seen in some ugly episodes like Gamergate on English Wikipedia, for those who have followed that, the more p 
powerfully we will come up against people who will say, wait, 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 that's too political. Now we're, now we're social justice warriors, and all kinds of phrases like that. That's a, that's a price we'll have to pay if we want to pursue this seriously. So I think it's a very interesting aspect of this uh, document, that like I said, on the face of it, there's nothing there most of us would disagree with, but to pursue it seriously would actually generate friction, not just with other challenges, like I mentioned, like the caste system, but also within our movement. There will be a minority, I hope, but there will be a fraction of Wikipedians who would not like how political we would need to get to pursue this truly. Um, these are the comments I'll make at this point. Uh, all right, I was uh, a uh, Polish language coordinator for the process, so it practically means that I was translating all this stuff and then trying to uh, do something <coughs> that the Polish community will be involved in the discussion. And it was partially successful, partially not, but actually uh, I managed to have roughly 40 people involved somehow in the process of higher or the lower level. Uh, uh, and then it worked for cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, but uh, uh, when uh, this document was just published, so then it was, for, at least for me, quite the, 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 the reaction of, of the people were for me quite disappointing because people were reading them, and then uh, the comments were that, okay, this is just another Wikipedia to the moon, <coughs> Uh, or uh, the comments were that, uh, uh, okay, but it does not ref reflect completely what I was putting in cycle one or cycle two. Uh, uh, then uh, there were some opinion uh, uh, that, uh, in fact, uh, this uh, was uh, written long time uh, before all the process started and all the process was tailored in the way uh, that uh, to, to be finished uh, with this uh, effect and it really didn't matter what we wrote all over the time. So this, I'm just, you know, saying what, what, what Polish community at this, and I saw that some other communities were saying more or less the same stuff. So then uh, there is really huge uh, gap uh, between uh, this text uh, or even the, the general idea and just the tiny little editors in tiny little communities just editing and not interested in, in the entire process. And if the idea of the process was to engage people uh, to, uh, to start understanding that we are global and we have some focus uh, for the future, not just sitting and uh, editing what we have now, so, unfortunately, at the moment, I have a feeling that it, it didn't work for, for, for some reason. So, this is my, at, at the moment, right? But uh, regarding the document itself, I personally can agree, as, as I've said, with everything what is there. But it's so vague and so uh, general that uh, you can interpret in more hundreds of, of ways when you are thinking what you really want to do. So, the idea is probably there will be the implementation step, which will be maybe harder in the sense that we will really discuss what, what, what we really want to do in practice, where to really put money and what kind of project we are really uh, start, establish or improve existing one to have some effect uh, in terms of this direction. But at the moment, I agree with Asad, this direction is about everything. I mean, everything... We would like to have everything, but what is more important and what is uh, less important is not, not, not worth address at the moment, so this is fine. My feeling at the moment. Could I take another minute to make one more yeah. point? Yeah. Um, one, one more point that is, to my feeling, missing in the direction is data that we actually have and are not expressing here, which is uh, in the huge amount of participatory discussions that we've had, all the salons, etc. Some salons, some meetings have mentioned certain topics and not mentioned others, right? Some communities care about uh, community health and others didn't express it as a big issue. Some communities care about the gender gap and others do not, right? Uh, we could somehow have come up with some rough measure of the community energy or interest um, vis-a-vis -vis these different challenges. 
which would have been very valuable to inform our subsequent strategizing. It, it's not in the document, though. In terms of numbers? Yes. It's not, really? I think it's not on the, on the direction page, but it's in the report. Yes, they are reports saying the statistics of... Okay, wonderful. In that case, in that case I haven't noticed it was added. It was in the presentation before. Oh yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry, it was in the other room. Uh, but, but just to clarify what I meant, it, it is important if, I don't know, 80% of the consultations mention gender gap is important, then we know communities want to work on that. If very few mentioned it, then we need partners and other venues rather than relying on the volunteer communities to pursue that goal. Uh, that's why this is important. Um, is there anything someone wants to say, someone to ask about? Yes, I, I actually want to respond. I think that it's really helpful to hear the reactions. Um, and I, I agree, I think, with Tomasha, some of the points that you made in terms of uh, things to call out. For a lot of what I understood uh, as I read the direction is that some of that is very intrinsic to the interpretation of it, but that is probably my bias from having been part of the process all the way through, and so it's very helpful to hear those sort of needs uh, from an explicit perspective. I, I want to respond, I think, to Asaf's point about it being a, not being a direction. Um, I think it's exactly what it is, is a direction, and that what comes next is a plan. And the plan is what allows us to prioritize and say this is specifically what we're doing and what we're not doing. And that has been the intention all along, was a direction that is high level enough that allows for organizations and individuals to make their own plans around how they want to interpret it. Um, and so it was always intentionally meant to be something that unifies around a direction but gives enough freedom and flexibility for organizations and individuals who have different resources, different capacities, and different needs in their communities to interpret it in a way that makes sense to their communities. And that the next step is really around thinking about how do we plan in specific ways, and to Tomas' um, point, make difficult decisions that may actually be the harder part of the process and the process by which we come to agreement. So as we've been thinking about it, the idea was to have something between the vision, which is very high level, and a direction, which is still high level, and then the plan, which is meant to be a shorter term cycle where we do planning for three to five years instead of 10 to 15 years, but that allows us to be much more practical in the decisions that we need to make, make decisions that are prioritized against the resources we have directly in front of us, and allows us to evaluate much more quickly as to whether we're being successful in them and then adjust accordingly. So I think maybe we might be using different words, but I think we absolutely agree with the intention and then the steps that come next. Okay, we are running a bit uh, late on time, so I'd like to follow up what we are uh, going to have a strategy on the CE meeting, uh, the next steps, uh, so I have a short, short overview. First of all, I would like to draw your attention, we, we feel maybe a bit that, uh, that some of the communities here, they're unrepresented in the discussion, it was hard to participate because of language barriers, uh, because of human resources barriers that we have. I want to... Uh, make explicitly clear that uh, maybe you have noticed that we had Catherine participating last year in Dijon, presenting that we are going to have this discussion. Uh, she is here now, Nicole is here for track A, so we have people here actually to hear of what you have to say. Please make use of it. So talk to Catherine, talk to Nicole about this. We, we can't have it uh, during the session at the moment. But, but we, people are available. Also, I am a great strategy enthusiast. Maybe you have noticed, I want to make it clear, I'm very enthusiastic about strategy. If at any point during the conference you see that I'm having a delightful small talk, then you can direct me towards the rules and bridges of serious strategy discussion. So please do that. I'm under, I make sure that, uh, that your voice will be delivered to, to uh, the people working on the draft and your concerns are, are very well present. So we are physically present here. Please make use of that. Please discuss the issues you have with the direction. Also, if you have any questions, any concerns, we have the discussion page. Although there are not too many responses to comments where all these comments that are on the discussion page in the direction, they are taken into account in, in drafting process. So please, if you have late minute concerns, please do write them there or, or talk to us directly. We will try to take these into account. 
you've just guaranteed yourself a late night session about strategy. Yes, thank you, Moisa, for remembering that. Cool. There, because yeah, I was cool. leading up okay, to sorry. tonight, we will have a traditional uh, CE folk instrument, uh, Estonian candy, uh, which has a surprise inside. So please join us for the late night strategy salon right after the lightning talks facilitated by Azaf where we come up actually with the great ideas for the next year of CE so we will do that on lightning talks and then we follow up with more strategy late night strategy discussion I'm available until morning I don't have anything planned for the night so well, that's why you didn't put an end hour to there is no end day. hour oh, right. it, it, we have to end by the morning because no, thank you. You're so good at leading up because in the morning at 9 a.m. we will start with uh, discussing the endorsement process for a direction endorsement and what is, what is even more fun. We, we have that actual planning thing here. So what is the actual plan? Yeah. We will discuss that tomorrow morning. Yeah. So it's a phase two. What are we expecting from a phase two? How we are going to use the resources that we have around the movement? Who is going to take responsibility for what in, the, in, the, in, in this big direction, this wide direction? This is the actual plan. This is something we can discuss tomorrow morning. And yes, if needed, when we can have a question and answer session uh, late afternoon. So if you feel that you want to actually have direct questions uh, in, the session, in this uh, session format, uh, public questions to, to Catherine or anyone here present, then we can schedule uh, third strategy session uh, tomorrow afternoon 5 p.m. Please let us know. We will do that and we can have even more strategy in, on the CE meeting. So these are just some, uh, some announcements and, and now we, uh, we need to go to a substantial lunch and enjoy that. So we'll see you around and discuss strategy. Keep calm and strategize and then we can actually have this wonderful conversation. Thank you. Keep calm and have lunch for that. And thank you again to our panelists for joining us here.